The story of the 1916 rebellion and what happened at the GPO is well documented, but we're not so familiar with what happened after the building was evacuated, which is why I've come here today to meet James Heron Connolly, great-grandson of James Connolly. This is the General Post Office, the iconic building of Dublin, where the leadership held this building for a week in 1916. How many were in there? The garrison consists of 300 volunteers in all, made up of London Irish, Glasgow Irish, Manchester Irish. Poets, farmers, trade yes, unionists? Yes, cross-section, I suppose. I mean, they weren't society. soldiers? No, they were volunteers. I mean, the amazing thing about that band of men is that they were all volunteers. They had no military training, and yet they took on the might of the British Empire. They held out for a week before the building became, well, effectively took fire as a result of artillery shelling. The building's on fire, so how do they escape? The decision was taken to go through Henry Place. Oh, opposite. Place, That's yeah. the laneway opposite. So they ducked across, but there across. some safety here there was? Comparative safety in here because they, were, they weren't in the line of uh, direct machine gun fire. They were only being subjected to artillery fire. That's all just shells coming over the top. Yeah, yeah. Still yeah. dangerous, but... So they made their way down, took a left at the end of Henry Place, and the next point that there was a problem was in, in Moor Lane, at the mouth of Moor Lane, because there was another British Army machine gun post at the end of Moor Lane in Parnell Street. So you're trapped, we are trapped. Great panic ensues at this stage because they realise the danger. And it's at that stage the decision was taken to break into this building here, O'Brien's Mineral Waterworks, and drag a cart out and place it across Moor Lane here. At this stage, the leadership had arrived down. My great-grandfather was placed here on a stretcher in the middle of the roadway, still shouting orders, or attempting to shout orders, though he'd been wounded. The White House was occupied by Michael Collins and secured. Pierce had arrived into the laneway. At the wave of a sword, 20 volunteers would rush across under the, sh under the shelter of the barricade. 17 volunteers fell wounded here. Michael Mulvihill died against... He was discovered dead against that wall the next day. When they emerge out onto Moore Street, what's Again, waiting? they're trapped here in this section of, of laneway because there's machine gun f a machine gun post at the end of Moore Street itself. So there's Got nowhere to else to go except to enter the terrace. So a decision is taken to break in the side wall of the terrace here through this... what was a doorway then, it's now blocked up. The decision has to be taken to continue burrowing their way on through the houses. So they literally they, bashed their way through? Well, they tunnelled and burrowed and bashed their way through wherever it was possible. In other words, the weakest wall would be taken to, to bash their way through. And were there people inside in these houses having their there dinner? Would have been, there would have been, yes, as they entered and cowering in, in terror, most of them, because of the artillery fire. Um, so all the houses along the terrace, this became a 1916 terrace. It's the last time, the Alamo? Yes, yeah, 16 houses were occupied. The entire garrison from the GPO ended up in this modest terrace of houses. And that's what's left of the door? That's what's left of the door. That's a disgrace. It's now blocked up. This is, this is our Alamo. That's a disgrace. And on the very first night, the leaders spend their night in Cogan's, this first house in the terrace. This and the here. Pierce brothers sleep the first night in the first floor bedroom. So these two windows here, it's in there that they slept that's that right. night? They, the first night they slept there. And it's in this house that James Connolly hands his command to the young volunteer, Sean McLaughlin. Now, the leaders took refuge in the dead centre of the terrace the next morning because it was the safest place to be, and that right. happens to be number 16. Ironically, Plunkett is the name over Paul the door. Plunkett's, but not connected to Joseph Plunkett, no. just a coincidence. Number 16 is where the decision to surrender was finally taken, it's where the leadership ended up. But the other houses, of import they're all important, but of immense importance, the fact that number 14, 15, 16 and 17 are our 1916 National Monument, so designated That's since... That's a National Monument? Yes, since 2007. We refer to it as a national disgrace. Thousands of Dubliners pass that every week. And how would you know it's a National Monument? Well, there is a plaque that was placed in 1966 that says... That little thing up there? Yes, the... it's almost impossible to read. All this area will be blitzed under the present planning application, other than the facades of these four buildings. So you'll have a ginormous shopping centre and, 